Hurricane Andrew is now making landfall in South Florida. The eye is just coming ashore there in Cutler Ridge. There's a, a constant roar and things are hitting the building. But it almost looks like a blizzard out here. Just one word, that's all I heard. Devastation, he just screamed out. In their minds, anyway, everybody thought that they were prepared for this hurricane. It turned out that no one was prepared for this hurricane. From the Weather Channel, this is Atmospheres. Real people, real weather. Hello, I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori. Welcome to this special edition of Atmospheres. A decade ago, Hurricane Andrew tore through the Bahamas, southeastern Florida, and the Louisiana coast, killing 26 people. Andrew still holds the title as the costliest natural disaster in United States history. It caused nearly $30 billion in damage, but that doesn't include the emotional losses of those who survived and had nothing left to call home. Saturday, August 23rd, 1992. It's 4 a.m. in Miami, Florida, when meteorologist Bob Sheets is awakened by a phone call from the National Hurricane Center. It's bad news for the director, who for days has been keeping close watch on a tropical storm named Andrew. Sheets learns that Andrew, more than 800 miles east of Miami, is gaining speed. It's moving toward southeast Florida at 12 miles an hour, two miles an hour faster than expected. We thought it would be at least another 12 to 24 hours before we picked up that extra forward speed. To make matters worse, a ridge of high pressure just north of Andrew is rapidly building, helping to remove conditions that kept the storm from intensifying. It also pushes Andrew directly toward South Florida. That ridge was strengthening faster than the models had expected, faster than we had expected, and so two miles per hour now may mean five miles per hour 12 hours from now. By the time Sheets arrives at work, just an hour later, Andrew is a Category 1 hurricane with sustained winds of 75 miles an hour. Andrew's new status is no surprise to forecasters. What they hadn't foreseen was that the hurricane would arrive on Florida's coast as early as Monday. Certainly, from the time we started there Saturday morning, we were playing catch-up. That increase in speed is about the only glitch in the forecast. The forecasts are generally great, but it did speed up, and that meant that come Saturday morning that folks didn't have as much time to prepare as they had anticipated the day before. Go ahead and save this. Remains in effect here and here. While the National Hurricane Center tries to predict which area of the coast is most likely to be hit, one local meteorologist takes a different approach. So far, it's looking like it's going to... It doesn't make any difference where you think it's going to hit. Well, the question is, do you think it's going to come close enough you're going to have to prepare? 41-year-old Brian Norcross of WTVJ in Miami hurries to the television station and calls his news director. I said, I think we need to go on at noon and start in some sort of hurricane mode of answering questions. Well, do you find I... At the same time, forecasters for the Weather Channel sound the alarm. Now, it's much too early to try to pinpoint any landfall, but we want people in Florida, especially along the Central Coast and the Southeast Coast, to be alert. At 5 p.m. Saturday, the National Hurricane Center issues an official hurricane watch for the Florida coast. Andrew is the first hurricane of the 1992 season. I'm going to surf until the cops come and drag me out of the water. Despite the looming danger, many Floridians assume they are safe. It's been 27 years since a major hurricane has hit the area. 59-year-old Howard Kleinberg and his wife Natalie are Miami natives, more accustomed to hurricane parties than evacuations. We fill up the bathtub with water for drinking water for later on, and we fried up chicken, and uh, we played Monopoly or cards or something like that. 25 miles south of Miami, Dina Cobb has no idea how to prepare. She's a pastor's wife at First Baptist Church of Florida City and the principal of the church's adjoining school. But she and her family are not Florida natives. Having limited or no knowledge of hurricanes, I just went to buy school supplies and just went on with life as usual. I really didn't think about it. Nellie Greenewald 
the treasurer of First Baptist Church, isn't giving it much thought either. The 74-year-old has lived in South Florida for 14 years without being hit by a hurricane. Still, her mobile home park is sure to be evacuated, so she makes plans to take shelter in the church. There is no way... Brian Norcross signs off just after midnight with some ominous advice. I said, what I want you folks to do is go to bed now and get some sleep. We're going to be on the air with continuous coverage here overnight, but I urge you not to watch it because tomorrow is going to be a big day, maybe one of the biggest days in the history of the city. Sunday dawns with clear skies, but the day is far from calm. Hurricane Andrew is less than 500 miles from the East Coast. Winds are at 120 miles an hour and climbing. And the storm gets closer and closer to Miami. At 8 a.m., Bob Sheets at the National Hurricane Center issues a warning for the coastline between Vero Beach on the north and the Florida Keys on the south, a stretch of 300 miles. No one knows exactly where Andrew's eye will cross the coast, but meteorologists are certain the danger is imminent. Sure enough, we've got ourselves a little monster out there. Winds 120 miles an hour. This is a Category 3 hurricane. Dade County must begin evacuation immediately. It will take Director of Emergency Management Kate Hale 24 to 36 hours to move half a million people out of the area. Andrew is expected to arrive in exactly one day. Yeah. Hale has just started the process when she gets even worse news. Within the hour, uh, we were notified by the National Hurricane Center that the storm was intensifying even more, and now it looked as though it were going to be a Category 4. Hale adds another 200,000 people to the evacuation order. This is a fantastic question. At the WTVJ anchor desk, viewers are flooding Brian Norcross with calls. He urges them to protect themselves. I said, if you don't take action now or very, very shortly, you're not going to be able to take action. And you may find yourself in a very serious or life-threatening situation. Nellie Greenewald listens to Norcross as she packs a bag. I only took one change of clothing, shelf food, and you take your Bible and you take your hair curlers. She and two friends are ready to leave their mobile homes and take cover in the First Baptist Church. But first, they join the regular worship service. I remember laughing because I remember one man saying, just as soon as the pastor says, amen, I'm out of here. For Dina Cobb, laughter is a release from her growing fear. Her piano music becomes a prayer as she leads the congregation. Two songs came into my mind and I started to play one. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. And then from that, I went in to keep me safe till the storm passes by. But right then, I knew that something was really going to happen. The service ends around noon. Andrew is now centered 376 miles east of Miami. A reconnaissance aircraft reports sustained surface winds of 145 miles an hour. Major highways are jammed as three quarters of a million people flee their homes. Shelters and makeshift havens begin to fill up. At WTVJ, Brian Norcross is still taking calls. Dina Cobb watches his reports and starts to panic. All at once, I realized these newscasters are screaming and saying, if you're in the Homestead, Florida City area, get out, get out now. She begs her husband, Pastor David Cobb, to leave. He wants to stay to help his congregation. But Dina's rising alarm finally convinces him to drive north. We were just crawling. It was slow. I mean, it was stop. It was go. It was frustration. Then all of a sudden, I realized I didn't really pack any food. I didn't pack anything. I was just totally unprepared. All I wanted to do was get out. By 5 p.m., Andrew is barreling over the Bahamas, still on course for Florida. A hurricane aircraft reports gusts of 180 miles an hour with sustained winds of 150. Andrew is on the edge of being a Category 5. 155 or over is a Category 5, and we're just five miles an hour short of that right now. So this hurricane is stronger than almost any hurricane now that ever hit the United States. 
Andrew kills three people in the Bahamas and continues its march toward Florida. Howard and Natalie Kleinberg are forced to evacuate their Miami home. They drive 24 miles south to stay with their son. It wasn't until late on Sunday that we realized, boy, we're, we're the bullseye. In Florida City, Nellie Greenewald with friends Lorraine and Thelma wait for landfall, huddled in a Sunday school room with no windows. Lorraine looked on the wall and at some pictures. She was a Sunday school teacher. And she said, I never thought when I put those pictures on the wall that I would be lying here waiting for a hurricane someday. The Cobbs are still driving. A trip that normally takes less than three hours has taken almost six. Motels are full and the gas tank is pushing empty. At 10.30 p.m., they find a station in Sebring that has some gas left. They reach a local Red Cross shelter by 11, just a few hours before Hurricane Andrew's strongest winds come ashore. Coming up on Atmospheres, that's stuck in the cement, so it looks like it's probably just going to go right over it. Hurricane Andrew slams into the coast of South Florida. Now, from the Weather Channel, here's your local on the 8s. bargain on a computer just call 1-800-GATEWAY because right now you can get a Gateway 300 LE desktop fully loaded with an Intel Celeron processor, CD burner, and a monitor all for just $599. That's right, a Gateway computer with a CD burner and a monitor for just $599. But hurry, this deal won't last forever, so call 1-800-GATEWAY today. That's 1-800-GATEWAY. Get the latest in cool PC technology by visiting the Gateway Store near you. It shut down New York City and paralyzed D.C. Do you remember the blizzard of 96? Uh, declare this to be a federal emergency. See why some people will never forget it. On Atmospheres, Sunday night at 8, Eastern and Pacific, only on the Weather Channel. Tangled up in all that yard work? Break free with the revolutionary new flat hose, based on the same technology that's been used for years on fire hoses. With flat hose, simply turn on the water and watch it expand for a full, unobstructed flow. Just turn off the water and it goes back to its flat shape. So watering your plants or washing the car has never been easier. Stop struggling to rewind ordinary heavy wet hoses. Call now and as a special bonus, we'll include the flat hose storage reel. Flat hose winds up easily without twisting. You'll also receive this adjustable flow spray attachment. Flat hose, convenient storage reel, and adjustable spray gun. A $50 value, just $19.99. So which would you rather have, this or this? Ask our operators how you can receive the Flat Hose Deluxe Sprayer with special chamber for adding soap or fertilizer. Order your Flat Hose now. Call this toll-free number now or order online at flathose.com. Now back to Atmospheres. The outer bands of the hurricane are now coming across South Florida. 
Monday, August 24th, 1992. It's 3.30 a.m. and Hurricane Andrew is starting to pound Florida. The Category 4 hurricane is heading directly for Homestead, 25 miles south of Miami. At the National Hurricane Center, meteorologist Bob Sheets can already hear the raging winds. The winds are now getting up there, hurricane force a little bit stronger than that. And about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, our satellite antennas blow away. Andrew is also causing a commotion at WTBJ in downtown Miami. Just before the eye of the hurricane makes landfall, Brian Norcross and anchors Tony Segreto and Kim Craig move from the studio to a nearby cement enclosed closet. Here we are, Brian. We're all set. <laughs> We're all set. I'll tell you what, this is the safest spot without. It occurred to me that if we sat there in our comfortable living room, while we're telling people to go to the closet, that was not going to have credibility. Do not think that uh, you are in any way safe if you have not hunkered down in, and, and got that mattress over you, friends. This is the time to do it. 150 miles northwest at a shelter in Sebring, Pastor and Dina Cobb listened to Norcross on a portable radio. Dina feels guilty about leaving Nellie Greenewald and the other First Baptist Church members down in Florida City. She's afraid they're still in their mobile homes. At that time, I really didn't know they had taken refuge in the church. So I thought perhaps that that would be it for them. I really did. At 4.45 a.m., Andrew Center makes landfall just east of the church where Nellie and her friends are sheltered. I sat up and said, this must be it because we could hear it. With sustained winds of 145 miles an hour and gusts of 175, Andrew speeds west across Homestead and Florida City. You can see the palm blowing, and then over here, uh, you can see the sand. It's almost like a, it's almost like a blizzard, a snowstorm of sand. And uh, I'm going to hold the mic up to the window here so you can hear it as it blows, and you can hear how stinging that sand is just on the windows of the car. Brian Norcross and the journalists at WTVJ continue their coverage on the radio as well as television. Even in their cement enclosed closet off the studio, they can hear the shrieking wind. The hurricane is so violent that the reporters can barely get footage. Right now I'm laying on the floor of the car. The reason I, that's for the reason I'm sort of sideways here in the picture. We are parked underneath a, a metro rail uh, near South Miami Hospital. The wind's right now gusting at up to 165 miles an hour. We can feel it in the car. The car is shaking uh, considerably. Gee. I tell you, Bruce, you uh, get in. if yeah. you're out there for our sake, please uh, come on in. Yeah, you've made your point and we certainly appreciate it. But, uh, but we have no need, further need of your services out there. There's a bicycle tied uh, to that sign. It's just flapping back and forth. And that's stuck in the cement, so it looks like it's probably just gonna go right over. It's just gonna fold right down the wind. The hurricane apparently even got a little bit stronger after it made landfall. This is pretty rare. We don't see that very often. The National Hurricane Center clocks the wind speed on a reeling anemometer while a 2,000 pound radar sways on the roof with each gust. 126 miles an hour, 147 miles an hour. And then there's a big thud. And, and we're on the sixth floor of this 12 story building and it literally shakes the building, it shudders and everybody gets sort of goes quiet and looks around. And then the radar screen, basically the image is stopped. Andrew has toppled the enormous radar. We have no Miami radar, so we can forget the Miami radar. The, uh, it fell off the building. Forecasters switched to images from Melbourne and Tampa. Uh, we've got our other radars working, the Doppler radar out of the uh, uh, Cape. The building is shaking right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, right. Moments later, the Hurricane Center anemometer also fails, just after a gust of 164 miles an hour. That surprised us that it was that strong and then to realize that we were not in the strongest part of the hurricane by any means. So we were not in the eye wall, and the people that were down south there were going through much worse conditions than we were. I'm sure that frightened everyone. Florida residents who are in the eye wall are fighting for their lives. Howard Kleinberg and his wife, Natalie, are riding out the storm at their son's house. 
Kleinberg and his son throw their weight against a bedroom door to keep it from blowing in. We put my wife and daughter-in-law in the middle of the bedroom, took the mattress, the king-size mattress, off the bed and put it over him. Kleinberg's daughter-in-law is pregnant and holding her one-year-old baby. The two men do everything they can to keep the wind from sweeping into the room and tearing off the roof. My son said, uh, you gotta go to the bathroom while we open the door. And I said, so? And he said, well, I have to go. I said, go ahead, but don't let go of the door. And he did. I mean, he, he didn't let go of the door. He just went. It was a thing where it was survival time. The Kleinbergs aren't alone in their distress. People all over South Florida are struggling with Andrew's wings. Brian Norcross is the only lifeline for many. Okay, we have a window broke in one of the rooms, and the door is closed, and they're trying to hold the door back because it looks like it looks like all going to cave in. All right, that's what you need to do. You need to do everything you can to hold that door in, Madeline. And you all get all your, your might behind that because you need to stay in that enclosed room there. You know, it was a very difficult thing, obviously, because what they're asking for advice is, what do we do now? At the time, I guess, I thought, okay, you know, I'll do my best, and hopefully it'll work out. As it turned out, it did. But, I mean, it was sort of dumb luck that it worked out because some of those decisions could just as easily have been wrong as right. From their shelter in Sebring, Dina and David Cobb listened with horror to the radio. It was like a nightmare because... There again, people were calling him and telling him they were trapped in their homes and they were asking him where should they go and how should they protect their children. Then comes some unthinkable news. The Homestead Air Force Base is almost completely gone. Andrew's winds have destroyed 97% of the facilities. When I heard that, I knew that it was really bad. And I started to wonder if our friends, our church members, if they were alive or what was happening to them. Andrew's fury is relentless, lasting for hours. People across southeastern Florida hold their breath, waiting for some relief. But for many, that respite never comes. Most of our concentration was on the people that were in the Northern Eye Wall because it never stopped. The eye went over a relatively unpopulated part, but the northern eye wall went over a very populated part. The eye does pass over Homestead in Florida City, but even those who witness a break in Andrew's wrath are not spared. In some cases, the second half of Andrew is even worse than the first. Next on Atmospheres. Well, how long? We, how have, long is this we, we have a long time to go. Just one word, that's all I heard. Devastation. He just screamed out. Kenny, we got a big problem. What's wrong, Big Show? The car's running good, isn't it? You don't understand. It's bigger than that. Hey, buddy, what happened? I was just trying to squeeze in a little test drive. Kenny, you got a race on Saturday. What are you going to do? Oh, man, that's easy. Have the guys go get some stacker, too. The world's strongest fat burner. Think that'll work? It has to. They don't call it the world's strongest fat burner for nothing. Nothing's faster than stacker, two. The world's strongest fat burner. Now that's big time. Mike, let's take a look at those reports next Thursday. And Tom, Susan, set up a meeting on Monday. Any other thoughts? Uh, you know, sir, instead of saving money by having only one office pen, we could just go to Staples. Yeah, with Staples 365 Savings, they compare prices and back it up with a 110% price match guarantee. That's sharp thinking. Hey, client's here. We uh, need the pen. Now get Staples 365 Savings delivered. Just call 1-800-STAPLES or visit staples.com today. Uh, Shelly, listen, it's Greg. I'm at the dentist. Yeah, okay. Sh Shelly, I, I want to come into work. They don't know what I've got. <coughs> I have a tooth. Scratching, rashing, 24-hour, like, mumps. What else can I have? I am really sick. Both ears, gone. Really bad haircut. I'm in traction. The Acura MDX with torque managing four-wheel drive. I was eating wax fruit this week. No. Taking the SUV to a place it's never been before. Tornado watches in effect for parts of central Texas, and we have had tornadoes sighted. We've also had a hail up to three inches in diameter. Storms are pushing right into the Fort Worth area right now. 
and not very far away from San Antonio either. Here are those tornado watches. They're extending from around the Dallas-Fort Worth area down to around the San Antonio area. The northern, the northern of these is a particularly dangerous situation tornado watch, meaning that some of the tornadoes in there could be very strong, violent, even deadly. We have had uh, some tornadoes reported today. Here's the satellite picture showing the highest cloud tops colored in in oranges and reds. We've had a big cluster of thunderstorms with lightning and heavy rain over northern Texas and Oklahoma. And then we've had this big line, this big squall line of thunderstorms that fired up on the dry line, separating out a southeast flow of warm, moist air off the Gulf of Mexico from a much drier air flow that's coming in off of New Mexico and Old Mexico. And it's along that convergence line that the storms have really fired up this afternoon. We've had uh, rain earlier in the day in Dallas that's cooled things off. In fact, there were, had to be some rescues from flash flooding in that area farther to the south. It's uh, much warmer. There is a warm frontal zone accordingly right across the Dallas area. That's why some of these tornadoes in the shear along that front could be dangerous. Right now, it's mostly damaging winds. The storm's coming right into the Fort Worth area, uh, packing a, a wallop. We have a number of counties here, Wise, Parker, Denton, and Tarrant County under warning. Cars have been blown off the road in Wise County near Balsora. And uh, these storms, uh, the extension of that line is coming into the Fort Worth area. The most dangerous winds are pushing right into the northwest corner up around the Lake Worth and Blue Mound area. Take cover, keep away from the windows if you're in that area. Farther to the south, the line it continues. It's about one hour away from Waco. Similarly, about an hour away from Austin, some of these storms have uh, had damage with them in the past. Some of the more dangerous storms with tornado warnings at the moment are coming across Uvalde County into Medina. They're about one hour, hour and a half away from the southwest suburbs of San Antonio. Tornado warning in effect for Uvalde, Uvalde and Medina counties in the vicinity of Hondo and Castroville uh, in, over the next half hour or so. Flash flood watches are in effect for East Texas up through southeastern Oklahoma up into the vicinity of northwest Arkansas from all this sustained rain and the rain to come. Severe thunderstorms will march east this evening toward the Houston area by midnight and uh, probably continue to have occasional uh, tornado possibilities along with hail and damaging winds. Watch out for the lightning. Severe thunderstorms extend now all the way up into the Oklahoma side of the Red River. It's going to be also severe tomorrow. Watch out around the Mississippi River Valley. Road game, huh? I just love road games. No distractions, just you against the world. It's an opportunity to prove yourself, to show everyone out there you can win no matter what. It's just a sales call. Thunder, no such thing as just a sales call. When you're on the road, count on Fairfield Inns inviting affordable rooms. Son, you need a fight song. Bum, 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 yeah, bum, fight bum, song. Bum, break, coach, break. Road game, huh? Now make three stays and earn two free nights. Call 1-888-MARRIOTT today. Fairfield Inn. Your Marriott awaits. Guess who? Hello? Hello, Mr. Storm. The dreaded telemarketer. Yes, it's Strom. Congratulations. The Mr. majority of telemarketing calls are dialed by computer. Now you can stop them with the TeleZapper from Privacy Technologies. When you or your answering machine picks up a call, the TeleZapper sends a signal that zaps your number off the computer's list. Soon those annoying calls just about stop altogether. Get the TeleZapper from Privacy Technologies now at Walgreens and Circuit City. Okay, let's do one of your predictions. You first. I predict you'll be on the menu. Ooh, zinger. You got me. Come on. Dow, 5,000. NASDAQ, 800. Interesting. Wrong, but interesting. Get this. Dow, 25,000. NASDAQ, 8,000. Give or take a grand. Or 10. You know the difference between you and me? Yeah, common sense. No, you're a pessimist. Nobody likes a pessimist. Nobody likes a talking steak either. No matter which way you think the market will go, Ameritrade can give you an edge. With a fast trading site and a 10 second guarantee, qualified market trades that take longer than 10 seconds to execute are commission free. Limitations apply. Open a cash account with $1,000 and get 25 internet equity trades commission free. Go to Ameritrade.com. Hey, aren't you going to leave us hip? Tipping is for cows. Atmospheres continues with your host, meteorologist Jim Cantori. Welcome back to Atmospheres. I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori. Andrew was an unusually small hurricane with an intense eye wall. And when this eye wall came ashore, it was a near perfect circle with extremely powerful winds all the way around. So for the folks in Homestead and Florida City, the second half of Andrew was even more harrowing than the first.
It's just before dawn on August 24th, 1992, and Hurricane Andrew is wreaking havoc on South Florida. 145 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 175 are blowing out windows and ripping off ceilings. Families move from room to room, searching for safety in houses that are disintegrating. Where are you in the house compared to the part where the roof came in? In the middle. All so right. we're okay. Here's what I want you to do. Side. I want you to stay exactly where you are. Andrew's northern eye wall is stationed over the most populated southern Miami suburbs, which never experience a break in the storm. And Andrew's eye is so small that even those in the center don't get much of a rest. It all depends on where you go through the eye itself. The inside of it, where the relatively calm winds were, was about 10 to 12 miles across, and the storm was moving around 17 to 18 miles an hour, so they had about 30 minutes there. Homestead and Florida City are near Andrew's southern eye wall. The edge of the eye passes over the First Baptist Church of Florida City for about 10 minutes. Nellie Greenewald has been sheltered in a windowless Sunday school room and is curious about the damage. She opens the door and peers into the eerie calm. The church hallway is covered with tree branches, shattered glass, and water. We walked just on our level and walked down the hall to the sanctuary and opened the door and went in there and we cried. Oh, it, it was, it was ghastly. Within minutes, the second half of the hurricane begins. It's just as ferocious, with sustained winds of 145 miles an hour and gusts up to 175. For communities in the southern eye wall, the second half of Andrew is even worse. The winds switch direction midway through, amplifying the destruction. They can actually change direction from north, northwest, all the way around to the south. So you're getting strong winds from two different directions. Also, all of the loose objects, all of the debris that's been blown down and loose and just blown out there in one direction. Now the winds come the other direction. Here it comes right back at you again. When it's safe enough to step outside, South Florida is unrecognizable. Hurricane Andrew has ripped a path of destruction 25 miles wide. Howard Kleinberg and his son think the end of the storm is merely the eye. They finally go to the window and look out. My son looked out and he, just one word, that's all I heard, devastation, he just screamed out. Nellie and her friends emerge from the church to find their mobile home park flattened. Everything is gone. The telephone poles, trees were stripped. They've never been in a war zone. Several people described it as, as being something like that. Indeed, South Florida looks like a bomb has been dropped on it. Suck it up, uh, South Florida, because this is going to be a very long, difficult, tedious, frustrating process. And uh, in all likelihood, everything will be a lot easier if you can pause, take a deep breath, and relax. In all, 25,000 homes are destroyed. 100,000 more are damaged. Total cost in South Florida exceeds $25 billion. We don't have no clothes for here. We're trying to see what we can get now. Hurricane Andrew has left hundreds of thousands without electricity, phones, or water. Yes, Many people are desperate with no idea how to get help. Some take matters into their own hands, looting stores to find supplies. Hey, Rocky, back. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stay down, man. Take the gun. Get, get the gun out of here. Get the gun away. You think this is what you ought to do in a situation like this when hundreds of thousands of people might be, you know, their, their homes are devastated and you're looting? Well, you want me to take it back? Yeah, I do. Okay, I'll take it back. The storm surge from Andrew is 16.9 feet high 
near the Burger King National Headquarters, a record for the Miami area. Animals from the Miami Zoo are on the loose, as are a group of monkeys from nearby research labs. Andrew also leaves oppressive heat and thunderstorms in its wake, adding to the general misery. The man struck by oh. lightning this afternoon. These pictures are just in. This happened at Chrome and Southwest 177th Street. Pastor and Dina Cobb are forced to wait until Tuesday before they can travel back south to Homestead, Florida City. They leave the Sebring shelter and join hundreds of thousands of evacuees who are picking a path through the wreckage. We were making our own roads uh, wherever we could, could get by. Uh, cows, pigs, horses were just running rampant everywhere. We would stop and help somebody get out, get their car unstuck, and then it would be our turn. And the, we were moving logs and trees, and it was just, it was unbelievable. South Florida is in utter chaos. We actually thought that there was a possibility that South Dade would never recover. That we would have to put up some kind of big fence and that would be anarchy down there. There was no government function. There was no police function. There was rampant looting, uh, total, total dysfunction. The National Hurricane Center has its own problems. Bob Sheets and his staff have been working for 30 hours straight but their labor is far from over. Andrew is still a category four hurricane moving west across the Everglades. The meteorologists regroup and issue a hurricane watch for the North Gulf Coast. Our building is damaged, our equipment is damaged, but we continued those watches and those warnings and never missed one advisory. Andrew weakens as it crosses Florida, yet retains much of its speed and strength. The peninsula is very flat, fairly wet. It's just pretty much the ideal land surface for the minimal amount of weakening. By the time it enters the Gulf, the hurricane has dropped to Category 3 status, but it's expected to grow stronger. The threat doesn't phase 35-year-old Terry Hudson in Berwick, Louisiana. She has spent her life surrounded by water. My parents lived in a camp boat down the bayous until I was born. And so um, down the bayou, people never left for hurricanes. They rode it out. Berwick's mayor, Emmett Hardaway, is less optimistic. He knows that the potential for heavy rains and storm surge from Andrew present grave dangers for the low, swampy lands of Louisiana. Well, when it crossed Florida and, and just devastated those areas down there, it didn't really lose a lot of its steam. It stayed a strong storm all the way across. Well, at that point, we knew we were in trouble. Hardaway sends his family inland, but stays behind to alert the 4,000 residents of his town. I had to stay. I was gonna take care of, uh, of the town's business, and I knew that when I signed on. 80 miles northeast of Berwick, New Orleans is on even higher alert. Parts of the city lie as low as five feet below sea level. It's bordered on three sides by water and protected by a delicate network of canals and levees. A surge and heavy rain from a hurricane could turn the Big Easy into a fishbowl. We knew with this major hurricane as it was, if it made a direct hit on New Orleans, it was in for a catastrophe worse than ever it occurred in South Florida. Next on Atmospheres, Andrew cuts loose on Louisiana. We looked and we saw our living room walls bulging in. That's when it struck me that, oh my gosh, we've got to get out of here. I have asthma. I also have coaching running through my veins. I have a daughter who's a fearless midfielder and a dad who taught me that when you give it your all, you always win. I have asthma, but it's just a single part of my life, and Singulair is part of what I do every day to help control it. Singulair is not a steroid, and it's not an inhaler. 
It's a different kind of asthma controller. It's a once a day tablet that can help control your asthma for a full 24 hours. It also comes in a cherry chewable tablet for children two years and older. Singular should not be used to treat acute asthma attacks. Continue taking your other asthma medicines unless your doctor tells you to stop or change the dose. If symptoms get worse, contact your doctor at once. Side effects are generally mild and vary by age and may include headache, flu, runny nose, and ear infection. For more information about Singulair, ask your doctor. And ask about adding once a day Singulair. I have asthma, but I don't want it to defeat me. Singulair, asthma control that can help you breathe easier. Now, from the Weather Channel, here's your local on the 8s. I don't have a clue what I'm doing here. Well, let's see what you got. Oh, wow, a treehouse. He can build anything. Never built anything before. Relax, I think you're in the right spot. He wants a trap door. Balcony. Rope swing. I'm going to suggest 16 pin. You can do it. You sure I can do this? He's a genius. Trust me. All right. Yeah. Thanks. I have asthma. I also have coaching running through my veins. I have a daughter who's a fearless midfielder and a dad who taught me that when you give it your all, you always win. I have asthma, but it's just a single part of my life. And Singulair is part of what I do every day to help control it. Singulair is not a steroid and it's not an inhaler. It's a different kind of asthma controller. It's a once a day tablet that can help control your asthma for a full 24 hours. It also comes in a cherry chewable tablet for children two years and older. Singular should not be used to treat acute asthma attacks. Continue taking your other asthma medicines unless your doctor tells you to stop or change the dose. If symptoms get worse, contact your doctor at once. You remember Tuesday afternoon, August 25th, 1992. Hurricane Andrew has brutalized South Florida, leaving it to sort through the wreckage. It's now churning across the Gulf of Mexico, regaining strength and heading straight for the Louisiana coast. At 5.30 p.m., Andrew is 150 miles south of New Orleans and back to Category 4 status. Forecasters anxiously track the storm's movement all too aware that the 17-foot storm surge that pounded South Florida would submerge the Big Easy. We didn't think at the outset that New Orleans was necessarily out of the woods, so to speak. You put water into the city, which sets below the sea level, and there's no way those pumps are going to stay up with pumping that water out. And you'll probably break the levee system itself. At 7 p.m., the city gets some good news. Forecasters predict that Andrew will miss New Orleans. Millions of people are spared, but thousands of others take their place in the crosshairs. Well, I think it's going to hit first down in, in the uh, swampy uh, part of the coast down there in uh, Terrebonne Parish, uh, pretty well south-southeast of Morgan City. The tiny town of Berwick 
is 80 miles southwest of New Orleans and one mile from Morgan City. Both communities sit at the mouth of the Mississippi and are prone to flooding. Levees to the north, east, and west protect them from the annual overflow of the river. However, nothing shields them from the Gulf of Mexico, 30 miles south. The levee system is designed to, to, to move water from north to south. There's very little done to prevent water from coming from the south to the north. Water is not supposed to travel that direction. As Andrew approaches, Mayor Emmett Hardaway sends his police force door to door, ordering the town's 4,000 residents to leave while they still can. And I simply told everybody, you just have to do the math on this one. The levees are 14 feet, the storm surge is predicted at 17, and so all I can tell you is, if all of those things hold true, we're gonna be flooded. Terry Hudson disregards the warnings. She plans to stay with her seven and eight-year-old daughters at home. There are always hurricanes in the Gulf. They always go east, they always go west. They never hit us directly. 30 miles away in Gray, Louisiana, Lois and Lawrence Barrow are just as oblivious. They're reluctant to leave their trailer that has been home for 10 years. But a radio report makes them think twice. The storm was approaching our area, and uh, we kind of was a little bit nervous. Everybody was a little nervous. They decide to ride out the hurricane in a shelter with their two sons and a baby daughter. By 11 p.m., the outer bands of Andrew are creeping over the Louisiana coast. The hurricane has been downgraded to Category 3 status, but the barrels can hear the wind gusting to 80 miles an hour. When someone tried to open the door, the, the winds were so strong, it kind of pulled the doors open. So much so it had to take about two or three men to close the doors. We were right next door to a cemetery. In Louisiana, the cemetery, in a cemetery, the tombs are on top of the ground. And here you're wondering, one of these things gonna fly off of here and fly into this building? The winds are also whipping up in Berwick. Mayor Hardaway tells police to stop patrolling the streets. And by that time, things were beginning to fly around. We stood there listening to these, this cracking sound and couldn't quite make out what it was until it dawned on us. That's trees cracking. By midnight, the center of Andrew is just 94 miles away. Terry Hudson is beginning to regret her decision to ride out the storm at home. She hunkers down with her mother and her two young daughters. The whistling and the howling of the wind outside started turning into roaring wind and it started getting extremely scary. We looked and we saw our living room walls bulging in. That's when it struck me that, oh my gosh, we've got to get out of here. Terry races to the phone and calls for help. They felt that the, uh, the roof was coming off of their residence, and she had her two daughters there, and she was terrified, and she didn't know what to do. She wanted to get to a safe place. James Richard and three other Berwick police officers begin driving to the Hudson residence. All four are risking their lives by getting into the squad cars. You could feel the core almost being lifted off of the ground. The, the winds was just, just too strong. It seemed like eternity. Finally, we see the light shining through this picture window, and they were at the door. Richard and another officer try to carry Hudson's daughters to their car. They kneel to protect themselves from the 120 mile an hour gusts, but they are literally almost blown away. It almost lifted us off the ground. I had to kneel down with her in my arms and get down on the ground to hunker down. I was like a sheet of paper to the wind. You know, the wind could have just taken me like nothing. They finally reach the squad cars. Now they must make it to a shelter at Berwick High School. It takes them 15 minutes to drive three blocks. They get to the building, but the terror continues. Soon after they take shelter inside, the roof of the gymnasium blows off. We had, were walking in water up to our ankles at the shelter. So it was an experience I'll never forget. As the dark night wears on, Andrew begins to slow down. At 6 a.m. Wednesday morning, the hurricane is still 35 miles south of Berwick, moving northwest before curving to the northeast. Mayor Hardaway's worries about rain and flooding 
prove to be valid. Andrew drenches the inland swamps of Louisiana with 10 to 12 inches of water, twice as much as it dumped in Florida. There was, there was more rain in Louisiana because it uh, wasn't moving quite so rapidly up there. By the time it's safe enough to step outside, the light provides more sorrow than comfort. Hurricane Andrew has caused a billion dollars of damage in Louisiana. Lawrence Barrow leaves his family at the shelter and drives home, where he finds little more than memories. I'm thinking to myself, you know, how am I going to call my wife and tell her what happened because we practically lost everything. So he says, we don't have a home. And I said, what? He says, we don't have a home. It's all gone. I says, oh, no. Mm -mm. It, it was like somebody hit me in the stomach with a, with a piece of cement or something. That's how hard it hit. On Thursday, August 27th, the National Hurricane Center downgrades Andrew to a tropical depression. In all, Andrew has killed 26 people. But if the hurricane hadn't lost strength over the Louisiana coast, the death toll would have been higher. We lucked out with Andrew, not only in South Florida, from the fact that it missed downtown Miami, but also in Louisiana, where it missed the big city of New Orleans. It's extremely vulnerable. We were better served by that storm coming where it did than had it gone to the east side of New Orleans, because there would have been a tremendous loss of life. It has taken years for people in Florida and Louisiana to rebuild their lives and recover from Andrew's terror. Those who survived have not forgotten the lessons they learned. Andrew taught me to take nothing for granted. Andrew taught me that what is really important in life are the people in your life. It's, it's all about family, having a relationship with God and doing things together while you have a chance because it can be taken over time. You can't wait around and think you're just gonna be able to walk away from one like that because uh, some people didn't. I will never do that again. I will leave for all hurricanes. I will not stay. Hurricane Andrew's $26 billion price tag here in the U.S. doesn't include the businesses that never reopened or the salaries lost from people who lost their jobs. There's also loss of revenue from the 80,000 people that moved away after Andrew had done its damage. I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori. Thanks for watching this special edition of Atmospheres. Just one word, that's all I heard. Devastation, he just screamed out. You can see the palm blowing, and then over here, uh, you can see the sand. It's almost like a, it's almost like a blizzard, a snowstorm of sand. Everything is gone. The telephone poles, trees were stripped. They've never been in a war zone. Several people described it as, as being something like that. We were making our own roads uh, wherever we could, could get by. Uh, cows, pigs, horses were just running rampant everywhere. We would stop and help somebody get out, get their car unstuck, and then it would be our turn. We were moving logs and trees, and it was just, it was unbelievable. We actually thought that there was a possibility that South Dade would never recover. You can't wait around and think you're just going to be able to walk away from one like that because uh, some people didn't.